A long time ago, in a part of New Jersey far, far away, I reviewed the first episode of the episodic adventure series, Life is Strange. Now that the full game has been released, I think it's time to look back at the game as a whole. Now, I liked the first episode that was released way back in January, but I did question how it sustained itself amongst its periodical releases. If you want to see my initial thoughts on an embarrassing first attempt at a video with a Radiohead song in the background, click this annotation right here. For everyone else, let's get into the heart of the review. Life is Strange is developer Don't Nod Entertainment's second game, the first being the ironically forgettable Remember Me, a joke that I also made in my first review back when I thought it was original. Remember Me was an interesting title. Originally released back in 2013, it focused on the theme of memories with a rather intriguing overall premise. Unfortunately, the game didn't quite meet the expectations it provided, and the final product didn't sell as well as the company wanted. As a result, their next project had to have a lower budget and the team decided on an episodic format to adhere to these constraints. From that, Life is Strange surfaced. Arcadia Bay and its accompanying school, Blackwell Academy, serves as the setting for Life is Strange. A seaside town in Oregon, Arcadia Bay is a very small and tightly knitted civilization that provides a good sense of being home. On the flip side, Blackwell Academy is a private high school focusing on the science and the arts. However, the state of this institution is complicated, as the school is almost under complete jurisdiction of the very wealthy Prescott family. These interactive environments in this fictional world are engaging, but at the same time, very limited. Not every object is observable, and not every character can be talked to. Completely normal for the genre, trust me, I know. But it admittedly took me out of the world each time I noticed it. The environments themselves seem extremely well adapted too, but just expect to occasionally walk into an invisible wall here and there. Meet Max Caulfield, an 18 year old at Blackwell Academy with the dream of being a photographer. After having a rather horrific vision of a massive tornado destroying Arcadia Bay, she finds herself in class with the ability to rewind time itself. She saves a girl's life, who turns out to be her childhood best friend, Chloe, and encounters the various corrupt natures overarching the town and the school. Using this power, she'll try to solve these peculiar instances, particularly surrounding the missing Rachel Amber, and prevent that natural disaster from her vision from ever coming true. Now, here's my first pet peeve of Life is Strange. They do not explain why she can rewind time. She just sort of can with no explanation in the slightest. Unless I miss something, which is entirely possible. That aside, I really like this narrative, and despite some of its problems, it had great characters, fantastic cliffhangers, and some really tense moments. However, each of these attributes have their own set of issues. Characters like Max are very likable, but I just could not come around on Chloe over the five episodes, and I never bought into her supposed renewed friendship with Max. Their personalities are just contradictory in every way, and I never found a reason why I should forgive any of the things that she did. Now, the cliffhangers and tense moments can be borderline earth-shattering, and I think these moments are absolutely worth seeing, but they're really isolated from some story portions that can kind of grow tiresome. As far as the writing goes, it's generally really good, but some of it just comes off as a very much an adult trying to talk like they think a teenager would. Which it is, obviously but mostly it's just how annoying the slang is used, to the point where it's fairly unrealistic. Maybe that's mostly my personal annoyance with the phrase hella. Wrong. You got hella cash. But it definitely needed to be toned down a bit. Overall, even though the middle episodes did have some boring portions of them, the final episode proved to be a complete roller coaster and well worth the wait over the five episodes in this story. Life is Strange is a mix of Telltale, Quantic Dream, and traditional adventure games. It's a highly focused story, but favors exploration over cutscene heavy quick time events. The time travel is a mechanic in itself, as any moment you see a butterfly appear in the corner, you can change the outcome. With a simple tap to the left trigger, you can rewind certain decisions and their resulting outcomes. 
Naturally, this comes into play with various puzzles of the sort, but the twist is that you always have the option to change a decision if it's not to your liking. As long as you don't exit the event's general area, you can contemplate and alter your choices for any length of time you want. Given the genre and polish of the title, this mechanic is welcomed with open arms. The system adds additional depth to the story and characters that I would otherwise be completely oblivious to, as I found myself going back through several situations to proceed with my personal favorite result. As far as modern adventure titles go, I really can't think of a more ingenious way to present a video game narrative through pure gameplay. My only real complaint is that sometimes the game says, Oh yeah, I'm an adventure game. Now go collect these bottles around this closed map. Because padding! I don't mind it. It just compromises itself in a weird way in the end. One of the most interesting and standout components of Life is Strange is its aesthetic. Color plays a large role, and every texture in the game was hand-painted, and it shows that it's a fantastic art style. The UI and general presentational things are shown as if it was right out of a teenage girl's notebook, and it fits perfectly, especially when it comes to the game's pause screen, which is in fact a notebook. Technically, the remaining aspects of the game are competent. The game runs as a constant 60 FPS, all while seamlessly flowing from gameplay to cutscene. Simultaneously, the game is fully voiced with excellent voice acting, though the actual limp syncing is tremendously off, but that's easily forgivable. The music is very appropriate too, featuring a handful of indie tracks as well as some original acoustic songs. It all illustrates a very calm presence to its mood, which is by all means welcome. It's just a very great produced game. Life is Strange is a game that I feel is absolutely worth seeing, but I'm not sure if I'd say it's much more beneficial to play it. Unless you're an adventure game junkie or someone who just really likes calm exploration, I don't think your experience would be any different from just watching someone else play it. Giant Bomb East is currently playing through it gradually, once a week, and as far as my personal interests lie, that probably would have been enough for me. But nevertheless, I'm glad I played this game, and even though I had a few minor complaints, I don't think it could have turned out any better than it did. I look forward to what Don't Nod Entertainment puts out next, as this is definitely a step in the right track.